Welcome to Probably Nothing, the IOTA and Shimmer news of the last few days. I'm Alexander, here we go. Centrix Lab tweets that in Kemi, Finland, for the Digit project, the next step is to integrate IOTA to make the temper proof. However, details about the project are not known. It is known that the IOTA Foundation is also politically active. Therefore, on the 6th of June, they published a paper called Bridging the Gap between Technology and Regulation with Dialogue. It discusses four issues in more detail – identity management, asset registration, smart contracts and legal certainty, and interoperability and standards. Dealt with an excerpt from a podcast in which Matt Jaga explains how we could save the climate. Renewable energy and data play a big role, as do IOTA and the Alvarium project. A small article in Programming Insider about IOTA and the potential of dApps was published. The magazine says, in the world of decentralized application, dApps, IOTA has the potential to completely change the playing field. Here are the latest assembly numbers. 233 million assembly tokens have been distributed so far. 45% of the total IOTA supply is currently staked, with 64 days left in the sixth round of eight. We welcome Teleconsys to the Touchpoint program. The collaboration will enable Teleconsys to offer enhanced telecoms and system integration solutions and services. This development underlines the growing interest and recognition of Shimmer Network's technology. This involves Zyron Clad, which is currently being tested. Kovai tweets that he spoke to many people about IOTA and Shimmer during his visit to ABCDE Capital. The mood in Singapore was very positive. Even old dogs from Huobi and Binance were surprised that IOTA is still alive. This shows that many have already written off IOTA, but dos believe that live longer and usually even become successful in the end. Congratulations to Bifrost Wallet, which came 33rd in the big challenges out of 90,000 participants. Web3 in Berlin is over and here are a few photos from the event. Landex Discord server was hacked and an airdrop was advertised there is a lock and tapped. It is recommended to create a new MetaMask wallet. The compromised account was found but was hacked again a few days later. The She Universe Saga has released a new video on YouTube introducing the three role from their game. I already introduced Build 5 in the last episode and now there is an article introducing the platform in more detail. Build 5 is a platform for decentralized application dApps, based on the Ethereum blockchain. The main target group of Build 5 are developers who want to create and deploy their own dApps. The features and benefits of Build 5 include support for smart contracts, the ability to publish dApps on the platform and access to a growing community of developers and users. It's also noted that Build 5 is open source, giving developers the freedom to create and customize their own apps. An important aspect of the roadmap is the introduction of the Build Token. The Build Token is Build's 5 native token and plays a central role in the platform's ecosystem. This token is needed to use the platform features, incentivize developers and support the governance of the platform. Soon Labs have also published a blog article on this. For community members who want to get more involved and climb ranks and to win prizes like in a game, I recommend that Shimmer's article became a Shimmer community champion. According to a Twitter post, IOTA Heroes will be releasing an update with a new feature for which there was also a graphic as a preview. Those who like to play can look forward to it. Those who have two hours to spare can watch the recorded video from the IOTA Foundation and the EU blockchain. Here the latest developments and opportunities in the DeFi sector are discussed. We are all urgently awaiting the big update with the big reset. Dave was written a small update on Discord about this. Over the last few weeks the development team has been working on the final changes for a new version, including implementing proning, fixing the EVM knowns problem and fixing other identified issues. A new feature has been introduced in WASP that allows claim metadata to be part of the L1 allies, improving usability and integration capabilities. Once the final change and internal testing are completed, the team will announce the improved version and reset the test network to avoid surprises. 
Walter D. made a presentation to banks and financial services. The innovative partners such as Sparkasse and IOTA were mentioned. Here, unfortunately, I can't help but take a side swipe. Sparkasse and Innovative? You can find the full presentation in the source. Kai has completed the big project IOTA for Flutter, at least the first part. On the website you can find information, tutorials and examples to quickly get started yourself. Congratulations! Hans Moke is back on track. He has started tweeting again after a long time. He writes, The last few months have been challenging due to personal matters that required my full attention. This resulted in limited time for work and social media. However, I remain loyal to IOTA and believe in the superiority of our protocol. After initial disappointment about giving up the MVP, we now realize that it was the right decision. Porting efforts to the new mainnet codebase are pressing well and a detailed update will be available soon. Overall, we are very excited to be back and to engage with the community. Kowai has signed a part-time contract with the TEA, the Tangle Ecosystem Association. In his role, he will drive the promotion of IOTA in Asia and attract new partners and projects. The IOTA Foundation has published a new paper, securing IOTA blockchain against Tangle vulnerability by using large deviation theory. This paper proposes a scheme called SecTangle to reduce Tangle vulnerability and prevent double spending attacks. This scheme uses security thresholds and employs a transaction recovery algorithm. The proposed approach is efficient, as confirmed by theoretical analysis and simulations. IOTA was named Coin of the Week by Good Crypto. Good Crypto is a trading app that allows you to manage your portfolio. That sounds more like an advertisement than an award. TangleCon published all videos on YouTube. For those who couldn't be there or want to check it out again, this is a good opportunity. The Indonesian government has published a list of all cryptocurrencies that can be traded without hesitation. The list includes 501 cryptocurrencies. Item 5 is sure to please everyone. There is also a new survey from the IOTA Foundation, where everyone can express their views and opinions. This will certainly not leave some cold. You can find the link in the sources. Three days ago, Landex had some positive news to announce. They have improved their user interface and it's now ready for further testing. There is an article about this on Medium. Finally, here's some hammer news. Kowai was visiting the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and Pacific. A non-public meeting was held there with a government official and an advisor from the Central Bank of the Maldives. Those represented showed great interest. This is a really one of the most exciting news in a long time. Let's see what fruits come out of this. Dom's new tweet brings room for speculation. Only Dom himself known what happens in Bahrain. There are a few impressions from the Digital Summit in Stuttgart. Benjamin Bönig from Farm United and Alfred have posted two photos, in which Holger from Space 5 can also be seen. Blackpin was also presented and it seems that there is also a collaboration with Spice 5, as Holger can also be seen there. Now Notes hosts various nodes of many cryptocurrencies to help developers. Recently they also have an IOTA node. Last but not least, updates from the task force and ledger. The parameter task force has identified the causes of unexpected throughput and log confirmation times in the system. New experimental results were obtained for the study of acceptance times based on different levels of congestion, showing that high levels of congestion lead to longer acceptance times for spammers. Parameter tables have been updated, metrics have been refined and parameters are currently being investigated and fine-tuned. Ongoing analysis and experimentation is underway, including an investigation into the impact of buffer size on acceptance time and parity confirmed blocks. Blocks issued by non-spammers were also found to have longer acceptance times. Several tasks were identified, such as examining timing difference and effect of low mana spammers, network-related tasks including reviewing issuer, deposits and updating documentation, congestion control documentation is being reviewed and work is underway on implementation and incentives, 
In the final phase, discussions are being held on certificates, outstanding properties and community rotation, as well as revising the general ledger and making preparations for academic papers. And a huge update of WASP in version 070 alpha 1. A lot of work has been done. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, stay tuned for more to come. It doesn't look that bleak, so don't be swayed by the naysayers. The day is long and they have nothing better to do. Stay optimistic, the episode was full of good news, but as always, it could be probably nothing. Make it good, bye bye. <laughs>